What if you could teach a robot new skills fast with just a handful of demonstrations? Today, I'm going to show you how NVIDIA's Isaac Groot N1.5 and the Lay Robot SO101 make this possible, even if you're new to robotics. I'm going to give you an overview of NVIDIA Groot N1.5, and then I'll show you a blog post and a Jupyter Notebook that show you a step-by-step post-training workflow. And remember, if you're interested in robotics and want to learn more, check out the Robotics Fundamentals Learning Path. I've shared a link below. Today, we're talking about robot learning. And when I talk about robot learning, I'm typically talking about two different types of learning, reinforcement learning and imitation learning. With reinforcement learning, we teach a robot in a simulated environment using rewards and penalties. With imitation learning, we directly teach a robot through demonstrations. Groot is a foundation model that can be used in imitation learning workflows. It's essentially a generalist model that has been taught on a wide variety of demonstration data from videos, from real-world demonstrations, and from synthetic data. Now, it has a lot of general knowledge, but it typically will not work for a specific use case, especially since it was originally trained on a humanoid robot, and today we're just using a single arm. And so with Groot, you can take a specific environment in a specific robot and post-train Groot to give it specific skills and even to change it from the original humanoid embodiment. This makes it much easier to train a robot using imitation learning. If you were training from scratch, you would probably need hundreds or thousands of demonstrations. With Groot, you might just need 20 or 40 demonstrations to get it to work. So remember, there's a really nice blog and a Jupyter Notebook that I've linked below. And then I'm going to walk you through this blog so you can see what it's like to post-train Groot. And then in part two of this series... I'll talk specifically about what makes a good demonstration because you need good demonstrations to build a good data set to teach your robot to do things. Here's the blog post I mentioned that walks you through how to post train Groot. First, you'll need to install Groot. And don't forget to create a Conda environment. Next, you'll need to prepare a data set. Now you have two options here. You can use a data set that they have provided or you can record your own data set. I recommend you record your own data set. Because unless your environment looks very similar to theirs, if you post-train with their data set and then try to deploy it to your robot, it probably won't work very well. Please keep in mind that this works best if you have camera views similar to theirs. So a wrist camera and then a front view camera. Don't worry, there are instructions in here on how to create your data set. You can follow the link to Hugging Faces website that explains how to do that. Once you've created a data set, you'll use this command to download that data set from Hugging Face to your computer. Please keep in mind that a lot of these commands will be slightly different, and so you'll have to adapt some of these paths and commands to your specific computer. And I've gotta say, I used Cursor with Claude to help me with this, and it was wonderful. It really helped me a lot. So I highly recommend you use an LLM to help you with this coding. Once you've downloaded the data, you'll want to copy the modality file that they've provided in the repository to the right location. Now here, once again, if you use the same cameras and have the same embodiment as them, this step is very easy because you just use the modality file that they provided. But if you change the camera views, if you change the embodiment, then you'll have to adjust this and make it correct for your specific robot. Once you've copied the modality file, you can go ahead and load the data set and get it ready for fine tuning. Next, you'll actually fine tune. A few points to keep in mind are that you can set the number of max steps. And so if later on you find out that it hasn't trained very well, you can increase the number of max steps here. There's also an argument you can include to resume training rather than starting from scratch if you want to train more. Just be careful. And if you do that, increase the number of max steps because it'll pick up with the step where it left off. So if you keep the same number of max steps, it won't train anymore. Now, fine tuning will take a few hours. On my computer, it took about three and a half hours for every 10,000 steps. On the final model that I trained that worked, I wanted to be absolutely sure it would train well. And so I ran that one for 20,000 steps. I ran it overnight. Once your model has finished post-training, you'll want to evaluate it to see how well it trained. And you do this with open loop evaluation. With open loop evaluation, you will evaluate the model with your existing data set and compare the neural network outputs to the ground truth data that you know is correct. And so if the predictions from the open loop evaluation are similar to your ground truth data, then your model's probably pretty good. But if they're very different, then you need a better model. And you'll either need to train more or provide better demonstrations or provide more demonstrations. And here I pulled up on the screen kind of a good example and a bad example of one of these open loop plots. Let me show you what those look like. Here's an early example of one of my plots. 
and you can see that their predictions do not match the ground truth data very well. Here's a later example that I trained, and you can see that the predictions follow the ground truth data much better. Once you have a good model trained, you can go ahead and deploy it. First, you'll launch a server that's listening for image outputs from your robot, and then when it receives them, it will give back articulation commands. Then in a second terminal, you'll start the SO101 arm, have it broadcast its images, and have it listen for actions. If you've done a good job with your demonstrations and your training, then the robot will be able to do whatever you've demonstrated. When I follow this blog post, one thing I wasn't sure of was what makes a good demonstration. And so in my next video, I'm gonna show you exactly that what characteristics of the demonstrations make them good and what characteristics make them bad. And some of those are not what I expected. And please, if you're interested in robotics, Isaac Sim, Isaac Lab, robot learning, any of that, check out the Robotics Fundamentals Learning Path linked below.